one thing that stood out was you mentioned the name of the bank, First Savings Bank, and how they're actually like in favor of Velocity Banking. Now, most of my audience here is 28 or so plus people watching. For the thousands of subscribers that I have on YouTube, I've created tons of videos that really teaches people how to finesse and finagle and kind of work the bank to get access to a HELOC or mm -hmm. PLOC. Oftentimes they walk into the bank and they're being sold or pushed or, or encouraged to get a refinance, a traditional mortgage loan, a home equity loan instead of a line of credit, a personal loan instead of a personal line of credit. So it's like, we don't just walk in in the bank and say, hey, I want to I want a first lien HELOC, a second position HELOC, <laughs> I can do velocity banking to pay off my debt and then leverage it to invest and acquire real estate and start a business and da, 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 da. Those are all red flags. So how is it that this particular bank, First Savings Bank, is actually in favor of velocity banking? Why is that? Let's make sense of that because isn't it, that possible? Isn't it in the interest of the banks to make the most amount of profit on us, the consumers? So that's that's our perspective from most yeah. of the viewers here of what we're used to. Uh, yeah. so this is a very, very different perspective. And we're very interested in touching on that before we get into the product of, wait a minute. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Does the bank actually like what we do? <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. So now we, we do, and I can't necessarily speak, well, I can't, the, the bank does. The way it was introduced our branch manager, my I guess my boss, his name is Roger Williams. And this is actually the third first in HELOC bank platform that he has built. Uh, and I can kind of get into why that is the case, you know, later on too. But he had a good amount of history with the product in terms of performance from a bank standpoint. And when he initially approached First Savings Bank, the person that was in charge of the mortgage department was very entrepreneurial minded. And so was open to maybe other types of products and opportunities that maybe more traditional bankers would have seen as a higher risk. And so right. he introduced the product to the bank. And I think uh, by the time that there was enough volume for the, the traditional you know bankers to notice it, it was already performing really well. And so kind of snuck in there you know, the back door. But the cool thing is from a bank's perspective, there are two sides to it. You know, you, you hit the profitability piece. The truth is that in terms of dollars made by the bank per dollar lent at the beginning of the loan, they don't make as much. That's that's true by far because the amortized mortgage is like crazy profitable. Um, Up front. But, right. I mean, and so they incentivize that and it makes sense. And when people use this as taught, right, as we teach and, you know, as you teach as well, they're driving down their balance really quickly, which also means that they save gobs of money in interest, which means that it's gobs of money that the bank doesn't receive, right? So naturally they wouldn't like this product and that that makes sense, but that's on the profit side. I have one argument or, or one one perspective from that from that, uh, from that side, which is that although although the bank is doesn't make as much profit overall, in terms of dollars lent in real time, they actually make more. The reality is the rate with first and HELOCs, the interest rate is a little bit higher than mortgages. And so the reality is as you pay down your balance, every dollar that you pay back, you give back to the bank and they just go invest that money somewhere else. So with the dollars that they actually are leveraging with this product in real time, they're actually receiving a higher rate of return than they would with a mortgage if they held on to the mortgage. So th there is a little bit of an argument against that, but there's another piece that is equally or maybe more important from a bank's perspective, which is risk. And so our particular portfolio, our particular, you know, the, the customers that we bring in, we we lead with the education piece, we lead with the, the velocity banking, and we do a lot of vetting, whether it is through educators like, you know, Denzel, or whether it is us teaching about this and letting people know about it. People are using it, all of our customers use velocity banking. And so, there's a risk piece to it, which is that the reality of this of this loan is that you could use it unwisely as well because you have access to your equity and the the risk assessors, managers, you know, uh, people at the bank, their worry is that people will use this in an irresponsible way, which will increase the balance and then you'll have a bunch of defaults. And that's possible with this loan if, if you're not responsible with it. Mm 
-hmm. And so they see that and that, and they're scared of that, right? So for most banks, what they see is a product that doesn't give them as much initial profit and is extremely high risk. And so our particular customers have proven different where they use velocity banking, which means that their loans, to, their loan to values are decreasing drastically, which the risk guys at the bank love, right? They're like, this is great. There's very little risk with this. At the same time, the profit that they make on the dollars that are lent out in real time. And because it calculates its, its interest daily, we're talking about daily interest, like in pretty much real time, they do receive a higher rate of return. So even from that standpoint, it, it can be seen as a profitable loan. One main difference is that people that we choose to market to, right? And the people that we choose to, to connect with, right? Are people that use this loan correctly, right? So our, you know, we, we know how to find a customer that is going to create a low risk first lien HELOC for the bank. And I think that's something that's also a little bit different because, you know, we could lead, you know, in terms of, of the messaging for this, we could lead with, you know, hey, do you want to save money each month and only pay interest? We could lead with that. That would attract someone who really needs to, to I mean, cash flow is important, right? But that messaging would attract someone who may may have a tough time budgeting, right? And it needs to needs to save money, right? That would be the that would be someone that would not use this loan for the overall long term benefit, if that makes sense. That does. And you know, we could lead with, hey, do you want to? If are you worried about losing your job, do you want to have something where you can float on your home's equity? We could lead with that, and I could sell a bunch of those, right? But the portfolio as a whole would end up being a very risky portfolio for the bank. And then they wouldn't like the product. So I think we're in a lucky spot because we kind of could could wink the bank right into, into mm -hmm. introducing the product. And by the time it became something that that would have an effect or would that that people would start paying attention to, it was actually performing really well.